So I'm on a quest to make my own conductive ink. And um, I want it to go in a pen or I want it to be able to put it into an inkjet printer. And in order to do that, what you need, especially if you're going to make it out of copper, is something that's um, very small and is stable in air because a copper nanoparticle will tend to oxidize. Uh, if it goes down below about 40 nanometers, I think, then it's bound to oxidize. So the only way to deal with this is to do it in some kind of capping agent. And there are lots of capping agents that are used. Some of the most interesting ones, incidentally, have uh, been green tea. If you mix up some green tea and add it to your copper sulfate, it will in fact um, bring out the copper as copper nanoparticles. The only problem with that is the um, green tea has quite a bit of tannin in it. So when you reduce it down to try and get the metal, metal particles back out again, what you do is get uh, just a kind of a gloomy brown mixture that's really impossible to do anything with. So I came across this method, and, and the method I came across involved um, 16 hours of heating and stirring. And that sounded like a dreadful mess, waste of time, a dreadful amount of time to spend. So I thought I'd try and speed that up by making copper nanoparticles in a microwave using only copper sulfate and um, ascorbic acid. Now, uh, I don't have some copper chloride, which is what this particular one uses. So I made the copper chloride by mixing the copper sulfate with some sodium hydroxide. Uh, that precipitates out as a kind of a green precipitate. You collect that on your filter paper, add some hydrochloric acid, and it goes like a, a bottle green kind of colour, which is your um, copper chloride. Then what you do with that is filter it, collect the green stuff, pour it out into a big old pan, and evaporate it until you get the green crystals. Now you need about uh, one and a half grams of uh, this copper chloride crystals that you've just made and you put them in 50 millilitres of water. Um, to that you add eight, eight and a half grams of ascorbic acid in another 50 millilitres of water and then you mix the two together and the resultant is a clear liquid or it, actually it's a bit cloudy at first but it goes clear and there's a kind of white precipitate at the bottom. So this is what you get after you mix the two solutions. The um, green colour of the copper chloride solution has completely disappeared and what you've got is this clear solution and then this white salt at the bottom there. I think this white salt is the ascorbic acid that has um, covered the copper and dragged it out and there are sort of copper nanoparticles embedded in this white salt. But that's what it looks like just after you've mixed it. And the grease take it a bit. You get that. So what I've been doing is uh, putting this in the microwave at half power, that's uh, 350 watts, and leaving it for 30 seconds, taking it out, swirling it, putting it back in, and this is after three goes. You can see it's gone this kind of uh, yellow colour, and it's a kind of yellow-orange colour. So it should be going that yellow-orange. So this is it after six times in the microwave. So remember it's 30 seconds, swirl it for a couple of minutes in for 30 seconds at half power. And after six sessions at that, it's gone this kind of nice deep golden colour, kind of a golden red. You still see some of the salts at the bottom, but they seem to be dissolving in this as it heats up. And that's after nine goes in the microwave. You can see it's going this beautiful deep reddish colour. Twelve times, and as you can see, it's going brown now. So after you follow that routine for 25 times, that's what you get, this deep brown liquid here. Now 25 times may sound like a lot, but it isn't. It only takes about an hour or so. Uh, this deep brown liquid is a suspension of copper nanoparticles that is stable. They're about 4 nanometers in diameter. So I thought I'd share that with you and uh, let you know how far I'd got. So once I'd done that, I painted it on a piece of paper. And uh, if you look there, you can see that we've got a line of pure copper metal. And you can see it glinting when you hold it up to the light. The only disappointing thing about it is, it doesn't conduct. 
and there could be lots of reasons why it doesn't conduct. Um, it could be because it's on the paper, it's absorbed into the paper, it could need some kind of an annealing process. Um, so I, I ought to try painting it onto glass really and then popping it in the oven and see what happens. But I've been at this particular thing for uh, a few days, so I thought I'd report on it and uh, let you know how far I've got. Anyway, give it a go, try and see what you can do about annealing it and um, let me know.